66% of men lose their hair by age 35. Thing is, when you start to notice hair loss, it's a little bit too late. Do you want a bald spot to pop up or do you want to do something about it first? Do you want your hairline to recede or do you want to do something about that first? Well, guess what? I've got a solution. You know what? It's HIMS. H-I-M-S. Go to HIMS.com. A one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and other wellness supplements for men. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. HIMS connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat hair loss. Well-known genetic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Prescription solutions backed by science. Order now. My listeners get a trial month of HIMS for just $5 today right now while supplies last. See website for full details. That would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy go to four hymns.com slash Stephen a that's four hymns f o r h i m s dot com slash Stephen a that's with a ph not a v you're listening to the Stephen a smith show podcast as promised the black mamba himself is on the line the one and only kobe bryant what's going on big time how are you man yo what's going on my man how you doing i, I i'm very happy kobe I mean, I, I know, I, I know. I used to lie. I used to lie and tell you that I didn't give a damn about the West Coast because I was from New York City. But damn it, I love LA, and this is special. <laughs> this, this, this is special, Kobe. This is special. All, all right, give it to give it to me straight. Uh, uh, when you heard the news, when you learned, whenever it was, you learned that Le- LeBron James is is coming to LA to play in a uniform you blessed for twenty years. Talk to me about what your reaction was like. Um, my my first reaction was you know, Rob, Magic, and Genie are beast. Mm. <laughs> I was like, man, um, I was so happy. Um, not just for uh, Rob, obviously, who's you know, I mean, me and Rob are like brothers, man. Yep. Uh, Magic and Genie, who you know, it was a tough call. It was a tough time for Genie to to decide to really take over the franchise, man, and. It was a lot of kind of second guessing herself, and um, and she decided to go forward with it. So I was extremely happy for this for Jeannie as well. And then the fact that I mean, I've been a Laker fan since I was three, you know, mm-hmm. so I bleed purple and gold, man. So I'm I'm really really happy um, to see the direction that we're headed in. Man. When you talk about the direction that this franchise is headed in, put into perspective from a player's perspective, what the arrival of LeBron James should do in the franch for the franchise as it pertains to other players' willingness to come to Los Angeles. Um, well, you know, I, I always told you, man, it takes a, a certain player uh, to put on that jersey, man, and, and um, you know, our franchise has been very, very fortunate. They've had. Uh, some truly, truly great players, historic players uh, to represent the franchise. And extremely fortunate now to have LeBron uh, as one of those players, you know what I mean? And uh, for other players around the league, uh, I think it's puts the Lakers uh, front and center again and uh, topic of conversation. Um, It creates an energy around the city, which I think is extremely important, not just for the city itself, but for the league as a whole. Um, The league tends to, to, to do better. When the Lakers are in contention, Boston's in contention. I mean, it's you know it's the key market, and uh, for us to have a player like LeBron here uh, just creates so much energy. And uh, you know, players like Lonzo and Kyle and the others um, now have that really good pressure uh, to push them forward uh, sooner rather than later. And I can't wait to see them respond to it. It's going to be terrific. We're talking to the great Kobe Bryant right here with Stephen A. on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Kobe, go back to what you were alluding to because it's not the first time that you've said that uh, throughout your career. I remember when, you know, Dwight Howard was a Laker and he was a free agent and people were talking about pitching for him or whatever. You said it back then. It takes a special person. It, it, it got to be a different kind of person to put on that uniform and to look forward to it. Talk to me about the allure, the pressure, or whatever word you want to use that comes with with being a member of the Los Angeles Lakers, being the marquee, rather, for the Los Angeles Lakers. What does that require? Well, I mean, it requires a, you know, a certain amount of thick skin, um, you know, because it's a, it's a place that's, that's uh, used to a certain legacy. And you, know, you have to be able to have thick skin. You have to be able to have uh, the, the inner confidence that things will be just fine and then be able to instill that in the rest of your teammates as you're going through the worst of times. 
And, uh, you know, LeBron's proven he could do that. I mean, they, they've thrown everything at this kid since he was in high school. And you know, he's been able to deal with it. He's been able to persevere through it. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to him doing the same here, man. You know, what, did, did you speak to LeBron James before he made his decision to come to L.A.? Um, I spoke to him during the playoffs. I spoke to him. And then I talked to him last night uh, right after the decision. I talk, you know, We reached and connected with each other. And, uh, I just told him, welcome to the family, man. It, it's uh, it's crazy. I mean, it sounds crazy, but I said, dude, you're a part of the family now. So um, anything you need on my end, I got you. Anything, you know, you, you know uh, uh, whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm here for you, man. And I was just, you know, just wishing him and his family the best and uh, look forward to seeing them when they get in. Now, clearly you have a different attitude and a different mentality than most people would expect at least some marquee stars, you know, would have. Like, for example, you said, welcome to the family. Welcome here. When we think about the greatness of Kobe Bryant or the greatness of any player, when they've been the face of a franchise so long and they've been the marquee, even after retiring, while rooting for a particular player, sometimes you find situations where, Somebody might want you to be successful, but not quite as successful as they have been or they were when they were playing. You don't appear to have that problem, that issue at all, particularly when it comes to LeBron James. Talk about that for a second, your willingness to root for him and to root for anybody in a Laker uniform. Where does all of that emanate from? Um, Because I'm a La- I'm genuinely a Laker fan. Like, <laughs> okay. I, don't, oh, yeah. uh, I don't think you – know, People really understand that, man. I was a diehard Laker fan as a kid, man. Like, so it's Laker to me above all, and Laker is family. Uh, Dr. Bush treated me like like family. Jeannie, everybody treated me like family. I love the Lakers with all my heart, man. It, it has nothing to do with anything else other than watching the Lakers be successful. In the last few years, and you know, it, it's been really, really tough, man. It's been really, really tough. And um, and then other than that, it's just, dude. As people, you gotta you gotta help your brothers do well, man. Like right. you can't, you know. You know, I had a, a a great run. I played 20 years. It was awesome. I had a great time. We're fortunate enough to win five championships and all that. Um, now it's somebody else's time, and that's what the Lakers has all have always been about, right? When I came here, Magic welcomed me with open arms, man. Me and Shaq, and uh, we're able to carry on the tradition uh, with Magic support and Kareem support. And uh, certainly, it's our responsibility to pay that forward, man. So anything that I can do whatsoever. Uh, to help Brown bring a championship back to CLLA, man, I'm all for it. How much, if everything, does that have to do with you never buying in to the debates, LeBron versus MJ, LeBron versus Kobe, et cetera? You've never entertained those comparisons or whatever. And on many occasions, or at least a few occasions that I can recall, you went on Twitter and you tried to educate and enlighten us all about how that's not a comparison we needed to throw out there. Was that thought process, the impotence behind you taking those positions that you took publicly? Um, No, not really. I just think, yeah, I don't. I don't like wasting my time on on debates that people can't definitively win. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Although it's entertaining to have them, I you know for me it's just more so. Uh, Brian is like a brother. All the guys, you know, we've all become close. James Harden, Westbrook, KD. You know, we're all we're all brothers, and we all support each other greatly more so than people understand. And uh, you know, Michael was extremely supportive to, of me when I first came into the league. Um, and so you, know, you, you got to pay that forward, no matter what people say, no matter who they have in a conversation for us. Yeah, I really don't care. I mean, it's really about helping each other and, uh, and pushing the game forward. And, um, you know, that's what I'll continue to do. And look, Kobe Bryant, when did that brotherhood really elevate itself to another level? I'm thinking about the Olympics in Beijing in 2008, but, uh, you know, people have alluded to things happening there when all of you guys were on a team together, hanging out with one yeah. another, building that camaraderie. Was it before? Was it after? Was it during that time? When did this relationship really percolate to another level? Well, I mean, most of the guys have known each other a long, long time, going back to high school. So, you know, when I joined the team in 2008, um, it was my first time getting to know any of them. And you got to remember, I was deep in the trenches. I mean, we just lost to the Celtics in the finals. And, you know, my mind is obsessively thinking on getting this gold medal and then getting some NBA championships, right? So I'm already in the hunt. Um, but, you know, Brian is, he's one of those guys that's very outgoing, man. He's, uh, you know, he, he's, uh, um, you know, he's a, he's a people's kind of a person, right? And so being around him, you have a good time. I got a chance to know him and his family and the rest of the guys, D-Wade, Mello and those guys. 
And uh, that's when the bond started. And uh, we started helping each other out. You know, we started getting up early in the morning, working out with me and things of that sort. And uh, that's when my respect grew tremendously for him and, and for the rest of the guys on the team. Mm. Kobe Bryant right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Getting back to the Lakers on the court, LeBron James' arrival to the Los Angeles Lakers does what for this team next season as you scour the rest of the, the Western Conference? I mean, you got detail on the ESPN Plus app. You've been doing great things, breaking down players, strengths, weaknesses, things of that nature. You did a phenomenal job with that. As you scour the Western Conference specifically for this Los Angeles Lakers squad, how are you feeling about them right now with the addition of LeBron James? Um, well, I mean, if you look at the positions, I mean, they have a lot of versatility. Um, offensive versatility, guys that can play make, uh, can create opportunities for themselves and for others, but can understand how to move without the ball. I mean, that's extremely important. I think that the, the, the true test, because it's such a young team, the true test comes on the defensive end of the floor. Okay. Um, you know, that's where the learning curve has to pick up substantially. And uh, that's what LeBron's actually really, really great at in talking on a defensive end of the floor, his energy on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, end of the floor. And I think that's going to speed up the learning curve for our young guys tremendously. And uh, so the defensive end of the floor is where I really, really look for them to make some big changes. And if they do that, I mean, who the heck knows, man? LeBron's going to keep you in most of these ball games, And uh, because of that, you'll always have a chance to be successful at the end. Let me ask you to put your on your GM hat for a quick second, Kobe Bryant. If you're the Los Angeles Lakers right now, you've got cap space for another max player. You can make deals. You can stand pat, wait until next summer, the class of 2019, Kyrie, Clay Thompson, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, Jimmy Butler. Uh, this year, uh, Kawhi Leonard uh, is on the record, is basically stating, all the reports are stating he wants to be in Los Angeles. If you're Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka, what do you do right now? Well, I, I can speak from personal experience because I've known Rob forever. Okay. And I know Rob long enough to tell you that he has thought of plan A through Z. And he has carved it a million different ways from that. Okay. <laughs> so he, he is extremely well prepared um, for whatever direction they decide to go in. And uh, I think he's going to read the lay of the land and see what opportunities present themselves. But from those opportunities, he's already thought about those millions of times. So – um, there's nothing that's going to surprise him, and you know, he'll be ready for whatever happens. Let me put you on the spot here for this quick second, because Rob Palinker was your representative, not just your friend, but your rep as well, and obviously he's somebody you trust profoundly, and he was one of the best agents in the business. Let's just give love and credit where it's due, because he deserves it. Yep. But when, 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 yep. you look, when you look at an agent becoming an executive – that was the trepidation of a lot of people. They didn't focus on it much because, of course, Irvin Magic Johnson is here. But we're looking at Rob Palenka and say it's one thing to be an agent because obviously he knows the ins and outs of everything. But it's another thing to transition and have to compete with GMs that you've been negotiating against for many, many years. Lord knows what you're going to be able to get done. How come you was that? I mean, why didn't you ever have any reservations about the job that Rob Palenka would be able to do? Uh, because I know how brilliant he is. Now I've mm. seen it firsthand. I mean, I've been in negotiation rooms with him. You understand? Like, I know how his mind works. I know how he prepares. I know how he studies every single detail and nuance. I don't understand how he under, how, how, how he knows how human nature comes into play into these deals. I mean, Rob's brilliant. And so I had absolutely zero doubt. In fact, when I talked about it, I said, Rob, this is, this is a fastball right over the middle of the plate for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is what he does, man. And so. Um, you know, they, they just, uh, when they hired him, they took a fish, they put him in water, and now that fish is swimming beautifully, man. And how do you feel about Magic Johnson? I mean, we've talked about Rod, we've talked about LeBron James, we've talked about some of these other players, but I don't, I think everybody recognizes the likelihood of LeBron James arriving to LA doesn't happen if Irvin Magic Johnson is not in the mix. Speak to me about your thoughts yeah, about Magic I mean, Johnson. Like, like, think about this for a second. Like, Magic was always my favorite player growing up. Right. And so okay. um, like, like, let's think about this. He, he wins five championships with the Lakers. Right. Yep. And then he becomes an owner, wins five more. Yep. Right. And then he steps away. He comes back now as president of basketball operations and is influential in bringing LeBron James back to L.A. I mean, they might have to get this dude another statue. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have enough room for it at the Staples Center, man? Dude, is there enough dude, room? Dude, no, enough Matt, room? I mean, magic, Matt. I mean, what Magic is pulling off, man, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, 
what he's been able to do and the legacy that he's had for, the, for our franchise and what he continues to have for our franchise, it's ridiculous, man. It's unbelievable. The Kobe Bryant that I know was about championships. You spoke, I believe it was on Twitter a few weeks ago, about LeBron needing to figure out a way to just win. He's in L.A. now. You were talking about a series, not necessarily his career, because he already has three championships. But now that he's in Los Angeles, he signed a four-year deal. He's got an opt-out after year three. What defines success? We know that championships define success for you. What defines success in your mind for these Los Angeles Lakers with LeBron and this squad over the next three to four years? Well, I think for LeBron and for our franchise as a whole, we've always just focused on winning championships. I don't see that changing. I think, you know, for us, um, you know, him being inside the family, inside this circle, this community, the beautiful thing about this community is that we all support each other. Like, uh, I remember speaking to Magic a few times about um, about some of his journeys and challenges and what does he think, what is he seeing. And we certainly do the same for Brian. I mean, Kareem coming into practice and talking and stuff like that helps tremendously, right? So we all just rally, rally around each other and support each other in every, any single way we can. Um, to try to help us get to the top of that mountain. How much support do you think LeBron will need now that he's in L.A. compared to the support that he needed in Miami, compared to the support that he needed in Cleveland? Well, it's not necessarily like what you need. It's just that anything helps. Like, you know, uh, uh, sounding boards help. Um, and, uh, you know, guys that you can just bounce concept off, concepts off of help. Um um, but in terms of on the court, I mean, he has a core young group of players around him right now that are extremely good, extremely versatile, and they're hungry. I mean, they're 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 gym rats, and uh, you know, ninety percent of the work's done in terms of having guys that want to be in the gym. You don't have to fight them to get in the gym, right. and uh, so you know he'll he'll be just fine. He'll be able to play this menu any any way he wants. Before I let you get on out of here, are you satisfied with this Laker lock with this Lakers squad as presently constituted to be good enough to make the playoffs next year? Well, yeah, you know, I think uh, with this roster that you have now, with LeBron on his roster, I don't think it's going to be much of an issue for them to make the playoffs. I, I mm-hmm. think um, the dreams are, are substantially bigger now. Uh, but like I said, LeBron accelerates the curve, the learning curve for these young guys. And they'll be able to learn a lot faster because they'll get a chance to watch him work every single day and how he comes to practice, how he takes care of his body, how he handles his nutrition and things of that sort. And they'll be able to learn really, really quickly, man. So uh, this is really going to help Lonzo's growth. It's going to help Kyle's growth and the rest of the guys are really going to develop quickly. I also think since only two games separated the third seed from the eighth seed in the entire Western Conference, you've got all of those teams that the Lakers are in the same boat as with New Orleans, Utah, Oklahoma City, Portland, etc. But also with Houston, they lost your boy, your former teammate, Trevor Ariza, because obviously they had yeah. to sign your man Chris Paul, and now they got to take care of Clint Capella. Do you see Houston being somebody that can get caught by one of these teams in light of the fact that your guy Trevor Ariza is not going to be there any longer? Well, first of all, I'm just I'm really happy for Trevor and signing that deal, man. It's very well deserving, a long time coming for him, man. And um, no, but yeah, they they lose a great one. I mean, Trevor was the glue to our team. You know, we were winning those championships, and you know, his defensive tenacity, his leadership, his toughness. You know, those those are things that will certainly be missed in Houston. Mm. Last question, detail. How many more of these you got coming down the pike, man? I need to know. Well, yeah, we um we're, we're working on expanding the franchise out. Uh, okay. and going into other sports. Um, we right. still have a few more details to do. I'm actually going to do a, a, a summer league uh, detail. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do a few WNBA details. I'm thinking about um, uh, doing a detail on my little sister, Jewel Lloyd. All and, right. Uh, doing, a, doing a detail for the WNBA finals. And, uh, you know, and just working on some, you know, some other stuff. Like the little shorts that we do, the little NBN, the fun, like, family right. shorts that we do. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of those for the WNBA, and I'm looking forward to that. And uh, and then hopefully next year when we come back into detail, you'll see a kind of a, a wider uh, breadth uh, of the franchise and you know a few different sports. Why do I sense that another Academy Award is down the pike? Why, am I, why, why do I feel like I'm sound, <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm sounding yeah. like I'm, that's what I'm hearing, Kobe Bryant? Why man, am I bro, like listen, that? Man. Bro, life is good, man. You got your show. You're rolling. You know, we're over here building a studio, and we're rolling. I'm loving every minute of it. And now my beloved Lakers are back in the middle of things. Like, you know, can't be any better, bro. That means you're going to be at some more games, right? 
You gonna show up to some game? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna come down and check it out. I, I can, I can, I can sit through that for sure. <laughs> uh, me, me watching my Lakers, you know, struggle like that, man. That, that's tough for me to sit through, brother. I got you. By the way, you got a book coming out this fall, don't you? Uh, I do. Mama mentality books coming out. Yeah, man. I mean, what? I mean, when were you gonna tell me about this? I'm just hearing about this. I didn't know about this. <laughs> I mean, what's hey, up? You know, I, I assume, I, I assume you being Stephen A. You know everything about. Every corner of the world. So I, not, that's just my that, that's my bad for assuming. But see, no, you knew though. So there you go. There you go. There you go. I gotta let you go, man. Listen, thanks so much for your time, <laughs> man. You know I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, bro. And I'll see you soon. You got it, my man. Thank you. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show weekdays at one p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.